Well, something a little different today, other than the snow, this seems to be my life lately, is working in the snow, cold. It's currently negative three degrees. And always on these single track mountain snowy roads with snow banks everywhere. Just got done with a real narrow road where I actually <laughs> broke one of my simulators on the front wheels of my truck because the, the path they cut for the road, my truck was wider than the path. But it's all day, every day. But you know, them guys, they, they sit back in the office 30 miles over them mountains that way where it's all nice and warm and sunny and they're just like, no, just go, 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 get all these jobs done, go hammer down more, more, more's broke. They don't care. Nobody really cares at the end of the day, but that's my sob story. No problem. You know, there's nothing really to complain about. Still love what I do. Anyways, looking at a hydraulic exchange on the excavator today. Now these exchanges are kind of known for leaking. They've gone through multiple design changes over the years. And we're going to look at one design change here. This isn't like uh, the latest and greatest one that we're looking at here, but I'll try to go over some of the latest models that they're going through. And currently there's actually a new one that's in a design phase that they're actually testing. I can't go much into that, but, but there is a new, even a newer, better option coming out for this exchange. But let's take a look at the problem of this and what makes them leak. So the exchange, if you're not familiar with the Bobcats, they this this hydraulic coupler right here has these lines that come down they kind of go through this swivel bank right here we're no longer using this swivel we're using a manifold which is a much better design this is just over complicated and over engineered so we got rid of that but what happens is we push a button in the cab we retract these pistons and that's how we can take our bucket on and off without even leaving the cab you know we don't have to punch pins and stuff out we just hydraulically release it and these pins you can see where they're holding, going through the end of the bucket here. That pin is taking a lot of stress right here when you're digging and operating the machine. And what happens is there's not a lot of movement, but as you're digging, this bucket is kind of walking this pin. And this pin is kind of removing or, or screwing a collar out. And we're going to take a look at that. I'm going to take the bucket off real quick and get a closer look. But I always wondered, how does that collar get screwed out? And that's all I can think of is the movement of this bucket's kind of just rotating this pin ever so slightly with stress and it's backing it out and uh, causing issues. Now that I've got it cleaned out a little bit, maybe we can kind of see a little better what's going on. This, this piece right here is the bushing and, it, and it's threaded and it screws into the main housing here. And it, it backs off, it screws out and it screws against this snap ring, uh, which is a retainer. And it pushes on that ring so hard that it'll actually bow it out. I mean, I've seen it actually crack the casing out here where this uh, snap ring actually uh, fits into the groove here in the in the housing it'll actually break that casting out and then we got to replace the whole thing but um, let's take a look at the other side I know it's kind of hard to see but we can actually see how this snap ring is already bowing out this is screwed out so hard against it it's like trying to push it out of its groove and it's very difficult we got a tool that goes in here to these holes and can screw that back in, but you can see the snap ring is kind of right on one of those holes. So that makes it difficult to even get our tool in to screw that back in to get the snap ring off. So sometimes these snap rings are a real fight to get out of here. It's a real pain in the butt, but um, always seem to end up getting them out one way or another. Let's work on this one, see what we can do. So we'll try the obvious method first, a pair of snap ring pliers, but Yep, it won't even budge. Let me try the other side. 
might get lucky on this one. Nope, both snap rings are just wedged in there solid. So in this case, I'm gonna try a hammer and a chisel. They only try to screw the piston in. Okay, so the piston is moving a little bit. That's good news, usually they don't move at all. Bye bye. I got the other side out. We'll see if we can get lucky enough and get this to screw back in. Oh yeah. that was enough oh yeah so this is the tool you know usually I like to show you how to do things without using special tools but in this case I really need this tool but however I've had these so stuck in there that even this tool wouldn't work matter of fact I got to hold this tool with the rag because it it's it's so hard it's so cold it feels like it's burning your hands um, it's just been so cold here lately, but what I've done is I've actually either extended this piston and welded the piston or I've welded, um, a washer and a nut. I mean, I've, I've done all kinds of creative things to try to get these bushings out over the years. Um, it seems like lately with this new design and we'll kind of talk about what the design differences are that this one has been easier, but this is a socket. So I'm going to put my impact on it and we're going to bring these bushings out. There is a spring inside here the spring is what wants to push those pistons out and keep them in that locked position so just note when we take this out it's not like it's going to shoot off but it's it's a long spring you'll see So I've got my bushing, this is the bushing, and then this is the piston. It just slides right out of the bushing like that. And then here is the long spring I was telling you about. See, it's just, it keeps pressure on these pistons, but it's not gonna shoot out and go anywhere. And then there's really nothing else to worry about inside here. We're just gonna go to the other side and go ahead and pull out that other piston and bushing. So I'm going to basically replace everything um, that's associated with those hydraulic pistons. I'm putting in um, new bushings, I'm putting in new pistons, and I'm replacing the spring. You see, I've got all my seals laid out here so I can just do them one at a time. But a couple different design things I was going to show you is that look how this piston has fine threads on it. And here's another... I'm sorry, I guess this is the, uh, the bushing. This other bushing has um, coarse threads on it. And they are designed differently inside. And I, th I think that the coarse thread is the later model. 
and they've got a little more uh, meat here, I guess, for that piston. You know, because that piston's constantly trying to do this inside the bushing, right? And it's it's also that bucket, like I said, it's trying to rotate around and it just slowly spins that out against the snap ring is what I'm assuming is happening. So that's just something to be aware of is that you, you've got to know which design you have before you go order all your parts. You might have to tear it down first to see which, which one you have. But I'm going to put that coarse thread back up because that's not the one I'm dealing with today. And... Like I said, if I'm if I'm rebuilding this, I'm going to do one seal at a time so I don't mess it up. You know, we've got one on the piston, then we've got them on the outside of the bushing and a couple on the inside of the bushing. You can also see that they're different colors. We got a pink and a black, and, and it's good to note which one goes where when you, before you tear this down. We can see the pink ones in the bottom and the black ones up in the top. We also got to, got to know which orientation these seals go in as well you know it's not just in or out there, there's a top and a bottom to this seal so you got to be careful to make sure that we get those installed right so i'm just going to take a few minutes and go ahead and get these assembled and then we'll get it put back together I like to use some a little bit of grease inside the bushing and on the piston before I slide the piston back into the bushing to help slide it through those seals. Now that I've got the new bushings and pistons resealed, before I put the bushing back into the exchange, I am actually going to use some green Loctite. And uh, if you don't know, green Loctite is like a bearing mount. <laughs> because, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, a way, and I, and, I, and I think they've got it. I mean, I think they've got a new design that, that's, that's going to um, really solve this problem. but. For now, I'm gonna do everything I can to keep these from backing out. And green Loctite seems to be the issue. After I do this, I haven't had one um, back out, you know, with, with the green Loctite on it. You know, they, they've been going for, you know, a couple years. The only one that I had to do was actually broke. And then in that case, to get this nut out with the bearing mount, we just heat it up with a torch and it'll kind of liquefy that uh, bearing mount again. And then we can back that out. So it's not permanent. You know, but it but it helps for sure to keep it in place. So before I put that bushing back in, I want to make sure these threads are clean and dry, not soaking in uh, hydraulic oil, anything that'll mess with our Loctite that we've got on the bushing there. So just a little brake cleaner and a rag is all it needs.
And of course, I also order a new snap ring to put in there because usually the old ones are damaged. And then from this side, I can go ahead and put my spring in. Yes, that's torqued to spec. So hopefully that give you a little better understanding of how the hydraulic exchange works and what it's gonna to take to reseal it if you get one that's that's leaking or those pistons backed out. It, it can be very difficult, but I gave you a couple different options of how I do it. So now, how I do it, it's how I did it, right? I don't know. But now that we've got that done, now I've gotta come up to, uh, looks like we got the main boom cylinder backing off here, so. It looks like the temperature is up to about 10 degrees, so it's at least getting better out here. Thanks for watching.